Israeli and Lebanese soldiers exchange fire across the volatile border between the two countries. The armies on both sides of the UN-drawn blue line are trading accusations on what caused the shooting incident. Israeli soldiers patrol a narrow road near the Lebanese border. They're on alert after troops from Israel and Lebanon exchanged fire across the volatile frontier on Monday. Several gunshots rang out across the heavily defended Wazani River Valley. But the United Nations, which helps patrol the area, says there were no casualties. The Israeli military has blamed a Lebanese soldier for the violence, saying he shot at Israeli troops who responded with a volley of their own. This marks the second time since May that violence has erupted on the border. Then, seven civilians were killed after Israeli soldiers opened fire on Palestinian demonstrators who swarmed over the frontier. Tens of thousands of protesters are camped out in the streets, demanding change, this time in Israel. What are the Israeli protests about, and how is the regime going to deal with this crisis? This is another edition of Press TV's News Analysis, and I'm Homo Lesky. Protests against repressive regimes in the Middle East and North Africa have now engulfed a new location, Israel. Here are tens of thousands of Israelis chanting slogans against their leaders in Tel Aviv. And a tent camp similar to the one in Cairo's iconic Liberation Square. The Israeli protesters have staged a strike and are urging others to join in. I'm here at the tent camp because I don't see myself continuing to live in a place that exploits its citizens, doesn't provide solutions for housing, education, transportation and basic conditions for its citizens and I'm not moving from here until this situation changes. This man organizes protests via social networking sites. People are, are very enthusiastic. Uh, uh, they're calling for all their friends to join, and, and it's really amazing. It uh, feels like a revolution. Hundreds of thousands of Jews were lured by Britain to Palestine following the Second World War. Since it was created, Israel has waged many offensive military campaigns against other Middle Eastern nations, killing tens of thousands of people. Ever since Israel's creation, Tel Aviv and its Western guardians have talked of outside threats that they claim may challenge the existence of Israel. However, it appears they have spared little thought for the internal challenges that may shake its foundations to the ground. This is one of the least developed places in Kenya, near the border with Somalia. Villagers who live here are worried. Their animals are dying from a drought that's affecting East Africa, the worst in 60 years. They say they were born in Kenya. Border demarcations drawn up during the colonial years separated families. They are from the Somali tribe, but on paper, they are Kenyans. The drought has hit them hard. They say they only get food rations from the government once a month. Some here feel refugees from Somalia are being looked after better. Maybe refugees are getting more help. Refugees are getting more help. We are seeing a lot of them in the camps nearby. While we are in this dry place without water and food, they are getting more help. Around 400 families live in Waldeni village. There are no health facilities, schools or boreholes to fetch water from. The nearest town in the Dab is 25 kilometers away. That's hours of walking. Some Kenyans feel the growing refugee population has faster access to food, water and medical facilities. It's causing resentment. There is a big competition uh, between uh, the refugees, uh, of which number has outnumbered that of the host community, and they have a lot of animals uh, that constitute their cattle. So for that reason, host community has been pushing to have more done also for them. 
The UN and other aid agencies try to manage the situation, giving assistance to the local population when they can, but resources are stretched as they struggle to deal with an influx of people coming in from Somalia. As the drought continues, locals here get increasingly frustrated. Harumatasa Al Jazeera. Loading starts in Mombasa, Kenya, as UNICEF prepares shipment of emergency food for famine-affected children in the Somali capital of Mogadishu. Almost half of Somalia is in dire need of food aid. Loading started in Kenya's port city of Mombasa on Monday as the United Nations Children Fund, UNICEF, prepared an emergency food delivery for starving children in the Somali capital of Mogadishu. The shipment was being loaded as aid groups warned of a growing influx of hungry families from the famine hit south of the country. Some 3.7 million Somalis, almost half of the population, are going hungry after drought affected some 11 million people across what local media have dubbed a triangle of death, straddling Kenya, Somalia and Ethiopia. The shipment is not the first one into Mogadishu, and shipping agencies say they will be transporting food aid every 15 days. But there are concerns that the aid shipments are still not enough to feed the hungry flooding into Mogadishu. The UN's refugee agency, UNHCR, says there are about 400,000 displaced people in Mogadishu, with about 1,000 new arrivals each day. And Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Tuesday, August 2nd, 2011. I'm Darko. This is part two. Uh, this is ggnonline.com. That's my website, www.ggnonline.com. And ddarko2012 on YouTube is my channel. Uh, Global Government News has a group on Facebook, so go and check that out. And YouTube's, uh, the video description, just scroll down there and you'll see the little link there. Um, okay, so we're going to move on here. And uh, we have NATO reaches dead end in Libya. The Russian Foreign Ministry has said that NATO-led military offenses uh, against embattled Libyan ruler Gaddafi has reached a dead end. The situation has reached a, a dead end that confirms that there is no military solution, Serge, uh, the head of the department, said. And NATO war crime, Libya water supply, NATO terrorist attack has hit a wa uh, water pipes factory in El Braga, murdering six guards. This uh, being the factory which makes the pipes for the great man-made irrigation system across the desert which brings water to 70 percent of Libyan homes according to sources in Libya the factory was hit after the water supply network was destroyed on Friday so July 22nd uh, 2011 a date for humanity to remember NATO hit the Libyan water supply pipeline it took months to repair then on Saturday they hit the pipeline factory producing the pipes to repair it and um, yeah that's it's an amazing system they have out there it says here, uh, France gives uh, 259 million U.S. dollars, uh, basically, to Libyans uh, and the rebels. It says here, and I'll go towards guns and all that, the seven Libya revolutionaries killed, 65 hurt. And uh, it says here, they're wounded in uh, clashes with government troops. War to go on, even if NATO bombing ends, says Gaddafi. The rebels who have seized about half the country, but frequently lose ground to counterattacks by better armed and trained Gaddafi forces. Uh, and remain dogged by their own internal divisions, consolidated gains around, uh, I think it's uh, Zilton, uh, Key Town. It says here uh, in the quote, no one should think that after all the sacrifices we have made and the martyrdom of our sons, brothers, and friends, we will stop fighting. Forget it, was the quote state television showed. Um, it says here, the leader's son saying to families displaced from the eastern rebel stronghold of Benghazi, regardless of whether NATO leaves or not, the fighting will continue until all of Libya is uh, liberated, he added. Moving on here, Gaddafi thanks Venezuela's Chavez for his support. That's right, Chavez got his head shaved, uh, talking about um, looking at new things in a different way and helping the middle class. Uh, that was a different article I didn't have time to get to. I respect him a lot, says Chavez. He's resisting there. Long live Libya. Um, next up, we have Egyptians turn against liberal protesters. Moms of ordinary Egyptians join with soldiers to drive pro-democracy protesters from their entrenchment. And that's a here square here on Monday showing how far the uprising's early heroes have fallen in the eyes of the public. So it says six months after young liberal activists. See, I told you, it's all... That was this whole thing was uh, like I said staged, man. It was provocateur with uh, intelligence agencies on the ground there doing this, and mostly liberals and from college, and that uh, helped to lead the popular movement to ousted Mubarak. And it says here some Egyptians uh, lined the street to applaud the army. Others ganged up on activists as they re retreated from the square, as a come to symbolize the Arab Spring rising. 
much like, like I said, it's been orchestrated by intelligence agencies because that's what they want to do. They're just uh, uh, finishing up one part of their plan, consolidation of the Middle East and uh, getting rid of whatever sovereign countries are left in this uh, brave new world. U.S. drone strikes kill four in Pakistan. And moving on, 10 NATO tankers uh, set ablaze in Pakistan. This happens every day. I don't report it on it as much anymore because it just happens so often. But that's because what? Like I said, NATO does not pay the Taliban uh, to allow their convoys to go through. The U.S. does. That's why the U.S. doesn't get uh, uh, their convoys attacked. It says here, U.S.-led raid kills eight Afghan policemen. At least eight Afghan police officers have been killed and eight others left injured in a U.S.-led airstrike in Afghanistan's eastern province of Nuristan. Then 64% of U.S. military deaths in Afghanistan happen on Bureau Satoro's watch. Next up, U.S. troops in Iraq will need legal immunity, says a U.S. chief. And um, then we have this, Iraqi Prime Minister to sign agreement for U.S. troops to stay in Iraq. So they agree to give the green light to Prime Minister Maliki to hold talks with the U.S. about say, staying some of its troops in Iraq beyond the end of the 2011 deadline, which we all knew was common. We called it, uh, you know, whatever, a year, two, three, four years ago. Special reporters Israel incorporated to powerful newspapers and television stations, which uh, civic groups have long criticized for ignoring the massive concentration of corporate power in a small group of Israeli business groups and families made the boycott a top story said uh, says here the Bank of Israel is already uh, says the country has one of the highest concentrations of corporate power in the developed world and um, said it far more than in Western countries such as UK Spain or Germany the key uh, paragraph of the story at the government committee agrees with those assessments it could recommend breaking up the biggest uh, oligopolies and opening Israel's market to new competition and investment both foreign and local and that's the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development development sorry Paul Norway too soft on serious crimes and look at this Norway's open si society set to change so all because of this one person everything's going to change people are going to lose their freedoms you're too soft you have to be hard you have to have no privacy and no freedom that's just how you're going to live now so it's fertilizer control and all it takes is one mind controlled patsy so it's here maybe he was acting alone maybe he was a uh, um uh uh uh, basically, uh, you know, thinking he was a nice Templar and a, he was a Freemason and fertilizer control, DHS, creates ammonium nitrate security program. Homeland Security said on Tuesday announced the creation of a, uh, uh, basically, a security program, program and it said uh, it had to do with what? Oh, McVeigh in Oklahoma City and then uh, the Norwegian man in Oslo. And, uh, and I guess it's uh, anyone that's buying over 25 pounds of this uh, fertilizer, which most farmers do, well, they're going to have to be checked and uh, uh, and basically bounced off a terrorist watch list. So there you go. Just like what? Uh, X Files. Remember that X, uh, that stupid episode where they go in there and they uh, uh, Scully and Mulder and they're, they're going there to Idaho or something like that. And they're like, shake, you know, going in there about uh, shaking them down about some fertilizer he bought. And but you know, and he said what? He said what? Oh, they could be a terrorist. And you know what? Now we're living in it. Now they're actually doing it. And they've probably already been doing it. They're just going to have more, uh, more ability to do it now. Then we have Norway terrorists purchased CIA uh, Caltrop tire spikes from Mexico. Italian committee approves face veil ban bill. That's in Italy. It's already been passed in France. African Union sources Al-Shabaab planning push during Ramadan. The top military group may soon counter the government's recent thrusts against them with an offensive of their own. Talking about the United Nations. It says refugees waiting 10 weeks for food rations due to red tape. And... Um, it's all political. They're uh, basically they're being used as political cat and fodder. And uh, like I said, this has all been building up before this whole drought and famine thing was building up uh, or brewing in the news. We had, like I said, you had the CIA, you had contractors over there training um, to fight Al Shabaab. Then you had uh, drone, the first drone strikes before all of this was in the news. Uh, you have a lot of ships, uh, actual uh, task force being created for quote pirates off Somali's coast so a lot of stuff is going on and um, for whatever reason and the, like I said these people are being used uh, to get whatever the powers that be want and just one more thing I in it's you know and, and I'm right why because look at the people in Kenya those people the, they're considered Kenyans they're getting nothing right they're getting nothing and they're starving and they need water so it's whoever the UN and the powers that be the, the little death cult whatever you want to call them uh, whatever they want to do, they always manipulate the environment uh, to their liking. It's like they're just pushing buttons like the man behind the curtain, and then they get their desired result. Or, you know, if all else fails, uh, you just, you know, 
you have a, a lone gunman who isn't uh, uh, capable of doing anything, is totally unsuccessful in life, but he's yet to, he's able to carry out successfully uh, killing and mass murdering uh, innocent people, and it never makes any sense. Thank you.